Hey, this is Dylan. Uh, thanks for spending some time watching my video today. Uh, I just want to go through some basic editing steps in the photo editing program Darktable. This is what I've been using for the past five years or so since I started photography. Uh, I have another video kind of talking about the introduction to Darktable, about uh, organizing your photos, bringing them into the program, things like that. So you can check that out right up here. And then uh, on this video, we're just going to get straight into it. Uh, just go through some of the basic functions and see how you like it. So let's jump in. So I want to take you through just kind of basic edits. I'm going to start with this food one because this is about uh, probably as basic, uh, basic as I get. Uh, my wife and I, we run a bakery out of our home, the Burley Bison Bakery. And this is orange flavored cinnamon rolls. I'm not really an orange flavor guy, but these cinnamon rolls are, cinnamon rolls are really good. Just like by themselves. Uh, so you can see here at the bottom, you've got your metadata, your XF data, one 125th of a second, f1.4, 50 millimeter, uh, 640 ISO. Uh, I actually have that lens right here. So this is that lens that I took these photos with. So this is actually the very old, uh, the older version of the Nikon uh, 1.4. You can pick this up for like Less than $200, a 51.4 for less than 200. I think that's pretty good. So there's a few basic things that we just need to do. Uh, exposure, white balance, uh, and contrast. So to start off with, you kind of go from bottom to top. Each of these lines here, these are different modules, is what they're called in Darktable. And you can actually take off, add and remove your favorite mo modules in the, from the favorites panel. You've also got uh, your basic group, your tone group, your color group, corrections, and effects. And then this one is just every module that's currently being used on the photo. The way you add and remove modules is you come down here to more modules. And if you look at color balance here, it's highlighted in lighter gray, but it doesn't have a star. Base curve is highlighted and it has a star. So if it's got a star, it's going to show up in your favorites. If it's just highlighted without a star, it's going to show up in one of these other groups, whichever one it belongs in. And if it's not highlighted at all, then it's not going to show up in these at all. You can just, you know, click on it, and make it show up in the proper group. Now this basic adjustments module, it's exactly what it sounds like. You can do your exposure here. You can do your contrast here, saturation, vibrance, brightness, middle gray, all that kind of stuff, but even auto. But in my opinion, it doesn't really work all that good, in my opinion. So you can use it if you want. I just choose to use exposure separately from saturation and contrast, separately from what else is in there? Brightness and all that kind of stuff. I just like to separate all these different kinds of tools just because that's how I work. I want to be able to turn them on and off separately, which is what this power button is here. So if I want to turn off base curve, no more base curve. I'll turn back on, hit that, and there's, there it is again. Uh, so first, exposure. You can see from the histogram here, the exposure is pretty low. I like to edit uh, the, big, the bakery photos pretty low, but this is still kind of dark. I'm just gonna bring up exposure there, and that looks pretty good. I'll show you something else though. If I reset this back to zero by double clicking on the triangle, you can actually come up here, click and drag. That'll also do exposure. Double click, resets exposure. Here, you can change your black point. So if you drag it to the left, you get a darker black point. Drag it to the right, you get a lighter black point. Double click, it does what you think. Sets. And now you can also come over here to contrast, brightness, and saturation. To add your contrast, and you know that's pretty alright. But I, I like to have a little bit more control over it. So what I like to use is this module called RGB levels. So what you can do in here is set a black point, a middle gray point, and a white point. So if you just move your cursor over so you can see the black point kind of light up a little bit and then scroll up one notch on your scroll wheel on your mouse. You just scroll one at a time, you can see how that gets darker and darker. Obviously, we don't want that. 
And honestly, it doesn't need too much darker contrast here. So I'm just gonna do like two ticks, which is very little. Uh, if you really wanted to go crazy, you could like bring up your mids a lot, the middle gray. I tend to think that this middle gray adds a lot of contrast, uh, not contrast, adds a lot of saturation to the mids as well. And I don't really like that. Honestly, I use RGB levels more just to add, like increase the black point more than anything else. Another way you could do this is with your RGB curves. Um, but these contrast ones, these are come with dark tables, so you can use it just the way, like it's just already in there. And I like to use contrast high and see how that looks. You can turn it on and off. I think it's probably a bit much. So I'm gonna do contrast medium. Uh, yeah, that's pretty all right. I still want a little bit of a darker point though. I'm just gonna increase the black point just a little bit. Um, and that's kind of the basic edit. I mean, there's not much more to it. I might increase the temperature a little bit. And that's probably a little bit too much. And that's pretty magenta too. That's a little green now. So here's tint. If you have a higher number for tint, then you get more green. And if you have a lower number for tint, Oof, get more magenta. Uh, I think that's pretty fair though. If you wanna do a spot for your, uh, like a spot white balance, you can come down to this preset thing here, click spot, and then you get this big box. You can see these corners, it does a really huge space. Uh, but what I like to do is just pick something that's, you know, actually white, which in this case, this parchment paper is white-ish. And that does a pretty good job. I think that looks really nice. It's a little warmer than what it was before, but I think that looks pretty good. So that's the basic edit. One thing I also like to add is local contrast with food photos, because it just makes it look a little bit sharper. You can see, let's scroll in here, like right here. You can see how that really brightens the highlights and then deepens the darks just a little bit, adds a nice sharpness to it. I really like that. So that's the basic edit. Uh, what I like to do once I have haven't photo edited, uh, I like to use the color label red. And if I make this bigger, you can see the red dot down here. And then after I've exported it, I'll make it yellow. Add a yellow color label. And so then that lets me know that I've exported it. But when I'm editing, I like to make this as small as possible. So let's go back, let's actually do a self-portrait. So what I like to do, this was with a, a big soft box with a gridded, with a grid on it. So it's like very, you know, pretty contained. So what I want to do with this is actually make the shadow areas a little bit darker, a little bit moody. I think the highlights are a little bit bright. You can see brightness right there. So I'm gonna take the overall exposure down a little bit. And then we can come over to this shadows and highlights module. If it doesn't show up in your favorites and if you just install Darktable, it won't. Uh, come down to more modules, scroll down until you get to shadows and highlights there. And then um, if it's unhighlighted at all, click it twice to make it go in your favorites. So here, the default soften width is Gaussian, but I like bilateral filter better. So obviously this is brightening up the shadows a lot, but I wanna do the opposite. So we can actually take this to either zero or even negative. It'll help with the background. We can, you know, super pump up the highlights, but that's not what I want. Just want them a little bit more even. So that's good. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do to bring in some more of that moodiness, I'm gonna come over to RGB curve, do contrast medium, See what contrast high. That is pretty moody, but I don't like how bright the highlight area is here. So we're just gonna grab this dot here, this dot here. Just bring it in line a little bit. And that's pretty good, I like that. You can see here in my eyes, you can see the gridded softbox, octobox. So, you know, that's kind of a basic edit for this photo too. Uh, I think that's pretty much where I had gotten it before. I may be a little bit pink, so I'm gonna increase the tint to make my skin tone a little more 
less magenta. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Color label red, that is F1. So I hope this has been a kind of a helpful video, basic edits in Darktable. There's a ton of modules. There's so many modules that you can go through and use uh, just dozens and dozens. I used maybe a dozen or so total myself. Um, so it's a really powerful program. I encourage you to at least check it out. It really helps me a lot with editing photos and things. So I like it a lot. Thanks for spending some time watching my video. I hope you'll check out some of my other videos. Click subscribe, like, all of those types of things, and <laughs> maybe I can uh, make more videos with some encouragement, you know? I could use some encouragement, so thanks. Okay, I wanted to do a quick behind the scenes for my basic editing and dark table video. This is kind of a cool setup for me. Okay, here I've got my super fancy uh, camera stand. I'm looking forward to getting a switch pod here pretty soon, so that's gonna replace this box of bakery supplies. This is nothing. Uh, this is the case for my lavalier and just my Bluetooth speaker. On top of my camera, I've got the U, U rig, basically a mirror. So I have the screen flipped up in the back. There's a mirror there. See me in there? That shows me the screen in the back of my camera so I can kind of see my framing and stuff. My lavalier microphone, connect to my shirt. I'll stand up here. Then I've got my light suspended. I've got it tied down to a sandbag to make sure it doesn't you know, come crashing down. Sandbag on the floor there so it doesn't topple over. 